Hey guys, it's Aaron. With us being on our computers today more than we ever have been before in the past, ergonomics plays a pretty big deal in our overall comfortability. Let's check out the Jellycomb wireless vertical mouse to see if it's a good option for a more ergonomic mouse experience. I wanted to say thanks to Jellycomb for sending me this mouse to share with you guys. If you guys end up being interested, check the description box below for the link to this mouse on Amazon. At the moment, vertical mice aren't the most popular thing on the market, but I work at a contact center, so I'm in front of a computer all day, and more and more of my coworkers are starting to use them, so they are starting to gain traction. So the vertical mouse is a matte black with a soft rubber coating around the entire thing. The build quality on it is seriously pretty good. And it's also very comfortable to use, not just because of the vertical aspect of it, but just because of that soft rubbery feel to it. Oils from your hands do stand out on the mouse, but who really pays that much attention to it? And it's something where you could just take a Kleenex and wipe it off and it wouldn't be a big deal. It is a fairly standard five button design, six if you count the DPI setting buttons with the left, the right click, the forward and the back, the center mouse scroll wheel click, and then the sixth button would be the before mentioned DPI button. The left and right mouse buttons are very quiet. You can definitely feel them when you click. There's a very satisfying physical click, but you can't really hear it. And that's designed on purpose. Uh, their listing page mentions that they've designed the mouse to be quiet so it doesn't bother your coworkers. The forward and the back buttons on the mouse for web browsing or for whatever other usage that you use them for have your standard click that you would expect. They're not very quiet. I did want to mention that on the Amazon listing page, they specifically mentioned that the forward and the back buttons will not work on Mac OS. I don't know why, but there must be some kind of driver incompatibility there. So that's something to keep in mind if you plan on getting this and using it with a Mac. The DPI settings on the mouse are, there's three different stages. There's 800, 1200, and 1600, which is a pretty decent spectrum of low sensitivity, medium, and high. I typically keep it in 1600, but that's just me. But there's two other options in case that's too high. So the mouse uses the 2.4 gigahertz wireless spectrum, which is pretty standard for most wireless devices these days. I wish it would have used Bluetooth, but for 20 bucks, you can't really expect a whole lot of features like Bluetooth. My only real gripe has to do with the little dongle that the mouse comes with. On the front of it, in just bright white letters, it says USB. I don't, I don't know why that's needed, but they put that there. And if you use it on a laptop or if you plug it in the back of your desktop where it's not gonna be seen, it's not a big deal. Um, but if you're gonna use it on a laptop on a side port, you're taking it to meetings, it kinda, I don't know, just for me, it bugs me a little bit. That wireless dongle does store on the bottom of the mouse. You take the battery compartment off and there's a little slot for it to stay in there, which is convenient so you don't lose it. Um, I just wish they wouldn't have printed USB on it, even though it's clearly a USB port. The mouse is powered by one AA battery, which isn't included with the set. Not a big deal. Uh, I don't have any kind of life expectancy as to how long that one battery will last. I wasn't able to find any kind of estimated ranges on that either. But if you're concerned about it, you can use the on-off switch on the bottom of it when you're not using it to extend that battery life even further. Or you can use a AA rechargeable battery if you wanted as well to not have to keep chewing through uh, batteries so it doesn't cost you as much in the long run. With it being a mouse, I would expect a couple of months of daily usage out of it. If you don't use it for a whole lot, then it should last even longer. I did want to point out that the Amazon listing page does mention that this is for small hands. I didn't catch that before. I did catch it as soon as I took it out of the box and it was much smaller than I figured it would be. But for me, it still worked out okay. I was wanting to put my entire hand on the mouse and it just wasn't comfortable that way. I had to use more of a claw grip where I was using my fingertips, which was fine. It was still comfortable, but I don't think that's necessarily how these mice are designed. I think you're supposed to be able to just cram the mouse into your palm as far as it'll go, keep your fingers flat, and then just use your entire finger to click. So for me, with having bigger hands and with the size of the mouse in general, I'm gonna be using it more as a travel mouse than one that's gonna be sitting on my desk at all times. So if you have small hands, great. If you have bigger hands, maybe consider it more of a travel mouse. I did want to mention that the vertical angle on this mouse is a lot more conservative than I was really expecting it to be. If you look at comparative models from other companies, the mouse is literally your hand is about vertical straight up and down. On this, it's still at an angle, so it's still more ergonomic, but it reminds me more of using an old Logitech trackball that I used to use, where it keeps your hand tilted, which is more ergonomic in general, but it isn't just a drastic, your hand is straight up and down. So if you're concerned about getting into a new spectrum of wireless devices, or mice, I guess in this case, I wouldn't really be too concerned about it because it is very conservative. 
Well, that does it for my review of the Jellycomb Wireless Vertical Mouse. If you have small hands or if you're used to a vertical mouse at your desk and you want a vertical mouse to travel with, I would definitely recommend this. If this video was helpful to you at all, hit that like button. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I'd love to help you out in any way that I can. If you want to see more tech and tech accessory related review videos, hit that subscribe button. But until the next one, this is Aaron. Take care.